Today we're going to talk about a crucial camera setting before you ever hit record or press that shutter, and that's white balance. My name is Timothy Reese, and I've worked in the television, film, and photography world as a director of photography and a photographer for nearly 20 years. Check out my videos as we cover not only the how, but also the why of various technical and creative techniques used in the creation of real images. Now before we dive straight into how to set your white balance or when to use auto versus manual, let's start at the beginning. What exactly is white balance? At its core, white balance is the process of telling your camera what neutral white looks like under a specific light source. Cameras don't automatically know what white is supposed to look like. They're recording reflected light and that light can be heavily influenced by the color temperature of your source or by large reflective surfaces in your environment that might be reflecting light and giving it a color cast. This is true for the world around us, but you might not notice it when not looking through a viewfinder. You see, our eyes actually perform their own version of auto white balance. Your brain is constantly interpreting color in context. If you walk into a room lit by warm tungsten bulbs, your brain doesn't tell you, hey, why does everything look orange? Instead, it corrects the scene so that the walls look white and the furniture looks correct and people's skin tones look natural. Likewise, if you turn off those lights and open the windows where perhaps indirect sunlight is now the main light source, at first things might appear cooler in the room, but over a short period of time, your brain will automatically adjust and before you know it, everything looks neutral again. Your camera also has an auto white balance capability, but it can also be set manually. There are two ways of doing manual white balance control, and the first involves manually dialing in what's called the Kelvin temperature of the light. What or who is Kelvin? I'm glad you asked. Kelvin is both a what and a who. Created in the 19th century by mathematician and physicist William Thomson, later known as Lord Kelvin, the Kelvin scale actually comes from physics. It's based on the concept of a black body radiator a theoretical object that emits light purely due to its temperature. As that object heats up, it glows red, then orange, yellow, white, and finally blue as the temperature increases. A visual example of this that always comes to my mind is the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey, a perfect matte black object. Now imagine we start heating it up. At first, it gives off infrared radiation, heat we can't see. But as it gets hotter, it begins to glow dull red, then orange, then yellow, and eventually white hot. The color of that glow corresponds directly to its temperature in Kelvin. That's essentially what black body radiation is, and it's the foundation for how we define color temperature in photography and video white balance. Let's take a closer look at a few examples. By having a general understanding of where color temperatures fall, you can quickly take a good guess at what the color temperature of any given scene might be based on its primary light source. For example, a candle flame is around 1800 Kelvin, very warm, very orange. A standard household tungsten light bulb, or what's called a warm white for an LED, is usually around 3200. Daylight comes in at 5600. A shady or cloudy sky can go 7000 to 9000 or even higher which looks really cool or bluish. Now, the reason for that goes back to the question we all probably asked as kids. Why is the sky blue? Well, you see, sunlight traveling through the atmosphere gets scattered by air molecules, and shorter blue wavelengths scatter more than longer red ones. When you're standing in direct sunlight, the warm yellowish rays dominate, but in the shade, that indirect sunlight is blocked, and most of the light hitting your subject is skylight light that has been scattered and enriched with blue wavelengths. That's why shade looks cooler and why your camera will interpret it as needing a higher Kelvin adjustment. Another interesting example of color temperature is the color spectrum within the flame of a candle. If you look at a candle closely, you'll notice that the bottom of the candle has a bluish color compared to the much warmer yellow that makes up most of the flame. Well, that's because the most efficient and hottest burning part of a candle is the part right near the bottom of the wick. This part of the flame is hotter and hence glows bluer with a Kelvin temperature that's higher than the rest of the flame. Now, getting your white balance correct at the image capture stage is important. When you set the wrong white balance in camera, you're not just shifting colors, 
you're also affecting how your sensor interprets and distributes information across the red, green, and blue channels. If you shoot tungsten light, but leave your camera set to daylight, your blue channel is going to be starved for data, while your red channel will be oversaturated. When you try to fix that in post, you'll be stretching channels that don't have enough information, which can introduce noise, reduce dynamic range, and create unnatural looking color. Setting white balance correctly in camera means your sensor is using its full range efficiently and every channel is balanced with enough data to give you clean results. Even when shooting raw still images, not having your white balance at least in the ballpark of what you're shooting could affect your camera metering and exposure choices. So even though raw does give you more flexibility to correct white balance in post, try your best to get it right the first time. Okay, so now we know what determines white balance and its importance, but how do we set it on our cameras? For that, we have quite a few options. White balance preset. Most cameras have built-in presets for daylight, tungsten, fluorescent, etc. These can get you close, but they're averages, not precise. There's also Kelvin setting, where you can manually dial in a Kelvin value if you know the color temperature of your light. This is especially useful if you're matching multiple cameras. Now using presets or dialing the Kelvin can get you pretty close in most cases. However, one thing we haven't discussed yet is the effect of tint in your colors. Since light is bouncing off objects all around us, those objects might create a color cast to the light hitting your subject. Or if you're shooting under certain types of artificial lighting, some bulbs like fluorescence or LEDs might also be emitting a specific tint, maybe green or magenta in color. Look, unless it's glaringly bad, our brain, thanks to its auto white balance capability, might not see these tints, but our camera is still susceptible. To truly make sure you are getting your white balance 100% correct, the best way is to set it manually. Every professional camera will have an option for a custom or manual white balance, and the process for setting this is quite simple. Select your manual white balance setting, point your camera at a neutral gray card or a clean white card under your actual lighting, and then choose whatever button tells your camera to, hey, this is white, and then let the camera calibrate. It's important to expose this card correctly as if it's over or underexposed, your camera might return an error or incorrectly set the white balance. This is the most accurate method and ensures you are matching your exact environment. Now, if you don't have time for any of these options or are quickly moving between environments lit with different sources, like a shot that goes from outside to inside or vice versa, you might want to give auto white balance a shot. Auto white balance works by analyzing the scene and trying to balance the colors so that the brightest area is defined as neutral and they're rendered without a color cast. Essentially, the camera is trying to do what our eyes and brain do naturally, find a reference point and normalize it. However, there are times auto white balance can trip you up. For example, if you're shooting a sunset, auto white balance might correct the warm golden tones into something neutral completely removing the look you were going for. Or in a scene with strong color casts, like a nightclub with a lot of colored moving lighting, auto white balance may keep shifting mid shot as it tries to guess what neutral should be. So auto white balance is great when you're moving quickly between environments like run and gun documentary work, but for controlled environments or specific artistic looks, locking in a custom or manual Kelvin setting is the way to go. And that brings us to the last point I wanna make about white balance. It isn't only technical, it can also be creative. If you deliberately set the wrong white balance, you can warm up a sunset, cool down a snowy landscape, or create a stylized mood. The important part is that you understand what's happening, so you're making that choice intentionally and not by accident. Now that you know the how and also the why, you can be more confident in setting your white balance both technically and creatively. If you like these videos, please subscribe and feel free to leave a comment about a future video you might want me to make. This user feedback really helps me see what users are looking for and ensures I can continue to make helpful and educational videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.